How you doing? Hey, welcome. My name is John Skippy Limcool. I want to do a video that's short, telling you what you can do with Unify after you've installed it. I've installed Unify. It's working. I got the patches working. What do I do next? Okay. First of all, make sure you click the browse button and go through the patches. There's a whole lot here to explore. Click the little green heart for the patches that you like. So when you hit favorites, you can get to a favorites list. There's a whole lot of categories of sounds. We organize things so that there's a four or five, three, sometimes there's two words. The large caps at the beginning group all the sounds of a similar nature together. The BPM down here means that it's got rhythmic qualities to the sounds and it's gonna be following a clock, whether it's the clock of Unify or else if you're running it in your DAW, the tempo is set by the sequencer in your DAW meaning we have a little transport page. And if you're running in the standalone version of Unify, which is a really great way to work, you can change this tempo and it will change <laughs> and it won't get stuck. Right now, I'm working inside of Logic and it's set at 134 beats per minute. If I change this, the tempo here changes too. So it respects your DAW when you have it installed in your DAW. If it's in standalone, you can go to the transport page, you can change the tempo. You can actually go to save, and click the little box if it's not clicked there. So when you save your patch, it will save tempo with the patch. So you can go from one patch, it's one tempo, to another patch and another tempo. Um, so BPM is an important category. There's a lot of stuff in there for all sorts of different ways that we use Unify and the tools of Unify to do cool things. So explore those. BPM split are these really cool big things that have all sorts of MIDI files and arpeggiators and all sorts of stuff going on. These are also something where I'm gonna to go to this page. We have eight knobs. So in these types of patches, make sure you play with the knobs. Because you can do real-time mixing. So what's cool is every one of these patches that you come up to in BPM split, the knobs are going to do different things. And the knobs are very powerful. If you click the little bullet next to each knob, we have linked parameters. And right here, you can click the little plus and you can go to any layer, to any plugin. If I go to instrument, there's nine instruments. I can go to any plugin. This could be Serum. It could be Zebra. It could be whatever plugin you have installed. You will see all the parameters of that plugin. You can assign them to the knobs. You can click here to change the curvature. You can double click to add extra points. And when you click and drag, you'll be blown away because you actually hear what it's gonna sound like when it's at that point. Because when you click on one of these bullets, it's sending real time information to the plugin to change the knob to that value. So you don't have to guess, you'll actually hear it. So explore the patches. After that, what do you do? You wanna play with your own plugins. And you've heard you can do that, but you haven't done it yet. So this video is really for you that have gotten to this point. You've made favorites. You can click the little favorites icon and here's your favorite patches that you like to use. Now you're ready to start playing with your own plugins. So how do you get your own plugins into Unify? Right here is the little tiny plugin icon. And if you click this, you'll see that there's a whole bunch of plugins actually already inside of Unify. By clicking on the instrument and going Unify Standard at the top, you see the instrument plugins. If you go over here to the space, it doesn't have anything loaded, but it's got a little plus. Click right there. These are the audio effects for insert effects that you can load into Unify. If you go under layer, you can say a new empty auxiliary. And there's all sorts of effects you could add here. You could put a reverb in here. And what happens that's cool here is say, go to hall, make it 100% the late level and 0% the dry level. And now you don't hear it, but there's a little auxiliary send right here. That you can send it up. So this way you could have one reverb, you could have three or four layers. Two of them have reverb, two of them don't have reverb. Make a different layer. You can have up to four auxiliary layers in Unify. 
and then you have the master layer. And if you want to use MIDI effects, then you'd go here and say, add a new MIDI effect. That will put one up here that can talk to multiple layers. Or you can click where the little yellow plus is, and this is a MIDI effect add. So you can go to your arpeggiators and all sorts of things to add that to Unify. We want to expand that to your own plugins that you own, that you bought, that are not the plugins that come with Unify. How do you do that? Go back to the plugins. Down here where it says operations, you can click here and there's options. You can scan, which tell us Unify to run a separate application that will scan that specific type of plugin and load all of them it can. We have an online manual, which you can get to right here. Uh, Unify manual, this will take you to a web page, which is our online manual, which you can read and it's got links for all sorts of possible frequently asked questions and all that stuff. So if you have a question, just click right here to go to the online manual. You can scan for all of them at once. And I would suggest to start with the VST plugins to scan. Even if you're using audio units or audio unit three version of Unify in your DAW, still scan VST because Unify uses whatever plugin format you tell it, that's what Unify is accessing. But the plugin of Unify can be a whole different format. In fact, I'm working inside of Logic Pro, which is using the audio unit version of Unify, but I wanted to use VST plugins. You can say scan and it says, here's my locations. If you're on a PC, you might have additional locations where plugins are. So you can hit plus and you can add additional folders. Once you've got that set up to the folders you want it to look at, just click scan and it will start scanning and it can do it in the background. So while it's doing this, I can now go back to Unify and I could say, I want to play, start playing or go have coffee and come back depending on how many plugins you have. Um, it can take a while. Now, the other way to do this is to go to the plugins page and instead of scanning everything, there's two ways to get just an individual plugin into Unify. Operations, select plugin files to scan. You can use this to actually go to plugins and you could go to the VST and I could say OMNI and there's Omnisphere, select it, say open. It will spin, it does a quick little test, and there it is. So now when I hit close, I could say init, and then I can go over here and I can go scan all instruments, and here it is, Omnisphere. And, but um, Omnisphere is loaded. And now you can get to all your libraries and play with them. If you own Plugin Guru libraries, a whole bunch of them have been converted into Unify format. So what that means is that my libraries that come for Omnisphere, for Massive, for Razor, all sorts of different plugins. See the small list? Look at that. All of these libraries so far have been converted into Unify format. And the reason for that is because of the loading of patches into existing patches that we can do in Unify. It's really fun to take a patch from one BPM synth library and play it. Let's go to another library like the Massive Power Pack. BPM, say Pulsing Cowboy, say load that into a new Unify layer. And you don't hear it because I haven't scanned Massive yet, right? So let's option click to get rid of that. Let's go over here and let's click select plugin files to scan. Go back to VST, M-A-S-S-I-V-E, um, Massive, select. And there it is. So now I can close, go back to the browser. Let's try to load Pulsing Cowboy again. And now. So I've loaded an Omnisphere patch and a massive patch. You could go to the Zebra 2 library. Oh, Zebra's not loaded. So let's go back to the plugins. Say operations, select plugin files to scan. Go to VST and once again, but this time Zebra, Z-E-B-R-A. Oh, it's gonna be in this case in the UHE folder, uh, Zebra 2, double click, boom, load it. Just by loading the plugin, I can go back to spiked and nailed, load, and now, 
it loaded this patch from our toxic zebra library, which is... So I've got zebra, massive, and omnisphere working just like that. I didn't have to quit the plugin. I didn't have to shut it down and restart. It just works. So you can do plugins one at a time by using this operation select plugin files to scan. The other way that's kind of cool is you can just go to the plugin folder, VST folder, for example, and you just click the patches. Say I wanted to use Shimmer Verb on this, right? Shimmer X64, because we're in 64 bit land. Drag it over the plugin list and let go. And boom, just like that, it's done. Close. Let's go down here to the master effects, add all audio effects, and go down here to Valhalla, and Shimmer is there. So, just like that, we added Valhalla Shimmer. So, you can add plugins one at a time with this operations. Select plugins to scan. You can scan all of your plugins all at a time, or you can just drag over a plugin at a time when you're ready to try it out inside of Unify. You don't have to have everything available. You could just go through, pick out your favorite handful, whatever you want to load. Say I want the Vox Continental, say load. That's Arturia, I believe. So now when I go to the list and I say init, click all instruments, Arturia, Fox Continental is there. And boom, that's how easy it is. So at this point, you now have plugins that you can work with with these patches. And this is where it gets really, really fun. So click and go down to this unified standard library. Say you want a guitar patch, this really cool um, octave jazz guitar in space. And then choose another library. If you own libraries for plugins that have been saved in Unify format, you can save your own patches into your own library folder to make a folder of your own patches that you love to use from whatever plugins you want. Then you can go to that library. I could go over here to, let's say, a mallet. Say, load into Unify. And just like that... I've added Omnisphere to a patch that originally was a unified patch. So play through the patches, realize that they're organized in this specific way, so it's easy to find, they're grouped together, 505 patches to play with, then click the little plugin list button, and you can go over here and go to operations and select plugin files to scan if you just want to load one or two plugins. Or you can say scan all your VST plugins or whatever format you want to use. Just actually, I just scan the VST plugins, except for the ones that are not VST, like Roland. Their plugins are not in VST format. So you say select plugin files to scan. I would go to VST3, go to the Roland folder because it's one of the companies for sure. They don't have them in um, VST2 format. So you can go over here and select all of them if you want and say open. And it will scan all of them. And when it's done, they will all be available to be used inside of Unify. Okay, so that's how it works. Thanks for watching. I'm going to hopefully do more videos of even shorter natures covering the different effects and the different plugins that are inside of Unify. So I hope this helps. Okay, see you later.